time's coming, all the girls are in bikinis I'm lying on the beach and I'm drinking cold martinis One fragrance just won't be enough, I think I'm gonna need ten That way I know I'm gonna find myself a girlfriend I spray cologne on my own till I'm in the zone I spray so much that you can smell me through the telephone The sun is shining and the ice cream vans are on the streets I'm spinning out the sickest rhymes over the illest beats I've got no hair left on my head so I need sun cream on it I've got more rhymes and lyrics and the greatest Shakespeare on it If you wear these fragrances around a lady you'll impress her You'll think you're smelling fresh but you know that I'm smelling fresher I got the Dior and the Chanel and the Guerlain Cause smelling good is at the centre of my game plan They call me Smelly, that's my name and don't forget about it I talk about cologne and I got no regret about it Hello guys, welcome to my designer summer top 10 fragrances for men 2020 list. Always an exciting video to do each year. Before we get into that, don't forget if you enjoy the video, please subscribe if you haven't already so you won't miss any of my future content. And thank you very much to everybody who's bought Gravitas Perron by Norton and Wilson, overwhelmed with the great reviews. And we've actually sold out in the USA and Canada. We're shipping more stock over there as we speak in the UK and Europe. You can still buy it, there's a link in the description if you'd like to do that. Let's get stuck in then. Top 10 designer fragrances for men, summer 2020. What are we looking for in a summer fragrance? Obviously they want to be fresh. We want something that's fresh, invigorating, staves off any feelings of mugginess or sweatiness, gives you an enhanced sense of cleanness and is fun and bright and maybe sunny smelling. That's what we're looking for. So often we've got a lot of citrus notes in these ones. I'm gonna do two other lists about summer fragrances this year. I'm gonna do a niche fragrance list and I'm gonna do a special cheapy inexpensive fragrance list. Uh, so I've excluded things like Zara fragrances or even Ferrari Bright Neroli because as far as I'm concerned, they're not exactly designer fashion houses are they either ferrari or zara that's what i'm saying i think everything in this list we can say they're proper designer fashion houses givenchy armani etc let's get stuck into them no particular order there's not a best one but all of these are really good uh, we'll kick off with a perennial favorite of many people for the last few years where they talk about fresh fragrances for men it's l'omidil cologne from the house of guerlain um, a really beautiful flanker to the original L'Homme Idyll, of which there are now many different fl flankers. This one has a lovely, juicy, lemonade-esque, citrusy accord in the opening. Really, really nice, very fresh, very vibrant, quite natural smelling, actually. And it has this unique twist of almond, which comes from the original L'Homme Idyll fragrance, and it's in a lot of the other flankers. Bitter almond combined with beautiful, juicy, fresh citrus, a little bit of crisp white muskiness, some clear, clean, crisp, woody elements in the base too. Great for a man or for a woman, actually, I think this one. It's citrus, but it's got this uniqueness about it. It's not like every other aquatic fragrance or the ones that just smell of lemon and lime because, because of that clever twist of almond and maybe just a little bit of a, a vanillic kind of sweetness in there as well. Very, very charming, very elegant. Galan just can't make a bad fragrance if they try. And this one is, as usual, really good stuff from the house of Galan. Don't forget, if you'd like to join the Smelly Army Private Members Club over on Patreon, there's a link in the description to do that. It costs just $2 a month and you get an extra video from me every week. Plus, you get to watch everything I've already uploaded in there. We're building a really nice community, lots of interaction, and I'd love to see you in there. Moving on then, the next one that I'm going to feature is going to be... I was really kind of stuck on uh, Chanel. What shall I include? I was thinking about Edition Blanche, Allure Homme Sport, but I've got, to go, I've got to go with the most summery one of the lot from the house of Chanel for men, and that is Allure Homme Sport Cologne. A flanker to the original Allure Homme Sport, which is already very fresh and summery. Allure Homme Sport Cologne literally smells very much like a combination of maybe lemon and mandarin, maybe with a little twist of neroli. I actually think it's it's a really kind of transparent, clear, classic citrusy scent with actually respectable longevity, which is kind of rare. Great alternative, actually, if you like uh, Chanel's uh, cologne in their exclusive private range, the niche kind of end of Chanel. This is actually a little bit in that kind of ballpark, in very transparent smell, very fresh, very citrusy really just refreshing and bright. So really, really nice stuff. Only criticism, it's not the most exciting thing in the world when something just smells really lemony and fresh. And there maybe isn't a lot of a lot else going on, but I do still sometimes just really enjoy this as a so-called dumb reach for summertime. So that's my choice from the house of Chanel. Uh, throw you guys a bit of a curveball now, I think. Um, it's D&G, 
Dolce & Gabbana Masculine, the only discontinued fragrance in my list this year. Many people talk about Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme, good choice for summer, for sure. Dolce & Gabbana By Man, another discontinued gem, but Masculine gets little talk. It came out in 1999, it's a citrus aromatic, again very nice kind of bergamot lemon opening. We've got really nice kind of spiciness and green herbal tones in the middle of this one, which I think are the really nice unique standout thing. And then a very pleasant woody vetiver masculine base. It has a bit of a 90s vibe, bit of a kind of retro vibe if you smell it now. Really hard to find online. If you're lucky enough, you can sometimes still pick this up for a respectable price. And D&G masculine, very, very classic. Kind of soapy, a little bit herbal. Uh, maybe the Dolce & Gabbana tribute to Dior's Eau Sauvage or something like that. And maybe, arguably, dare I say, right up with it in how much I enjoy it. So to track that one down, if you can, it might have to be a blind buy. Just trust me, guys. Find it, buy it, and forget it. Okay, moving on. Next one in the list. Um, what is the next one? We're gonna go with Mugler Cologne next. Okay, Mugler Cologne, you've heard it all before, right? Soapy, it smells like a bar of soap. Thierry Mugler went on holiday to Morocco as a kid, remembered the smell of a bar of soap, recreated it in a wonderful, grassy green, sort of fresh vetiver, bit of neroli, it just smells like the, a very nice soap. I actually wish you could buy soap or shower gel cheaply that smelled like this, but it's a really good kind of anti-fragrance, enhanced cleanliness in a bottle. Something really special and nice about it, though at the same time it's not boring, and I really love Mugler Cologne. I think now it's called Come Together and it's part of a different series of sort of flankers effectively to Mugler Cologne and this, the one that still smells the same as the original is called Come Together. I haven't actually even tried the others and I'm not that interested to, but that's just me. Next up, it's one that I don't actually have a bottle of with me because I moved house a couple of months ago. A few bits are still stored here and there. Bulgari Aqua Amara. Pretty sure this is uh, officially discontinued. It's really good. The best of the Aqua range from Bulgari. Forget Atlantique. I still prefer this to the original or Aqua Marine or any of the others. It's got a lovely mandarin, juicy orange accord in it. A little bit of depth. I think there's actually patchouli in the base. It means bitter water in the name. And there's a bitterness in this fragrance that is combined with really nice, juicy citrus. Maybe not the most natural smelling in the world, but maybe because they've cleverly used synthetics mixed with citrus type of accords, it lasts well. It projects great performer and you can still pick it up online for good prices. Still good juice indeed is Bulgari Aqua Amara. The hype was deserved, I think, on that one. Okay, next in my list, we've got a more recent release here. This is Gentleman Givenchy Cologne. I think this came out in 2019, I think. This is a lovely use, again, of citrus notes in combination with beautiful florals and specifically a absolutely wonderful iris accord, maybe borrowed a bit from Dior Homme, just a twist of the kind of Dior Homme-esque iris, mixed with kind of white linen cleanness, transparency, beautiful citrus, very well balanced. Again, a bit different, like the Lomidil Cologne, that twist of the iris, the other one, that one had almond, something different in your fresh, transparent, masculine type of fragrance. Really, really nice, classic modern release. Love the uh, elegant, simple bottle design. And again, performance not amazing. Generally with these, all of the performances kind of okay to good, but we, we haven't really got any beast mode ones. But if you want summery smells, they don't tend to last that long unless you get some of the really high end niche stuff where sometimes they've managed to make that happen. Next up, this perhaps belongs in the cheapy video, not this one. Is Nautica really a designer fashion house? Arguably not, but I wanted to throw it into this list anyway. I've only discovered it this year been going for ages. Nautica Voyage is beautiful. It's a very, very aquatic, fresh scent, kind of a combination maybe of apple, cucumber, and maybe a bit of lemon and aquatic ozonic notes. Very, very soapy, very fresh, very easy to like. The modern version doesn't seem to last incredibly well, but it doesn't suck as much as some people would have you believe. So if you're in the mood for that kind of nautical smell, that naut nautical crisp freshness, sort of like the bright blue color of the water. It kind of smells how that looks. I really actually do respect Nautica Voyage, a great freshie, just, just a fun and affordable fragrance for summer, I think that one. Uh, next, we're going back in time to 1984, I think they first released this. I've got the vintage, don't stress about it. If you can get the vintage, great. It's 
It's a bit more rugged, maybe a bit more oak moss, real oak moss in the ingredients. The modern reissue, still excellent. Armani Oporon. Don't worry about Aqua di Gio Profumo necessarily, or even Profondo. Armani's Oporon is the classic gentlemanly citrus, elegant citrus and um, aromatic fragrance. A little bit of masculine balls about this one. There is patchouli in the base. It's a little bit spicy in the middle. Again, some a lot of kind of herbaceous supporting aromatic accords. Lavender underneath the beautiful lemony fresh opening that again we have on this one. Very, very classy, very refined, maybe for a dressed up summer night out. If you're not afraid of a slightly more mature smell, you can go for this one. Apparently Eric Clapton favours this one amongst uh, a number of other classy celebrities, I believe. So Armani Oporon, absolutely great. My old one performs quite well, but it's not a beast. Again, it's just decent in performance. I haven't road tested the modern one so much, but don't overlook this from Armani. In my opinion, it still surpasses Aqua di Gio and its flankers in pure class. Okay, next in the list, it's time for another old and goldie. Eau de Rochas, 1993, ah, this is superb. Bit in the same vein maybe as DNG's Masculine, that's really hard to find. This is really easy to find, still available, still made, still very affordable. Lemon Verbena actually is one of the key players in this one. If you like Creed's Neroli Sauvage, it reminds me quite a bit of that. So you've got Lemon Verbena, again you've got White Musk, bit of Vetiver, uh, a few kind of floral notes in there giving it a slightly kind of watery, crisp, airy feel in the mid. And just, yeah, if you know the note of lemon verbena, it's one of the best uses of that out there. And I get really good performance from this. Love the bottle design and the price is really low online. So Eau de Rochas, kind of one of the biggest no-brainers to pick up in the list if you want something affordable from a reputable designer house. So the last one in this year's list, guys, is Eau Sauvage. I've put it in spring lists before, spring, summer, pretty interchangeable. The classic 1966 Eau de Cologne style fragrance from the house of Dior. Fantastic bergamot. There's rosemary, again, there's vetiver in the base, and there's a, a very nice jasmine note, a bit of hedione, which is sort of derived from jasmine, a kind of very magical accord that got utilized for one of the first times ever in this perfume. And it's also apparently a big player in Creed's Aventus, although you don't read it in the note listing. So hedione, uh, a sort of fresh, woody, floral type accord. I think it derives from a chemical found in jasmine or something like that. Anyhow, this is a beautiful citrus aromatic fragrance, elegant, crisp, and absolutely a masterpiece of composition. Again, in the same kind of mood, you'd reach for this with uh, Armani's Oporom, that kind of thing, this one. Really just your classic, it was probably the Aventus of its day. Uh, it apparently got loads of compliments for, was it Steve McQueen? I think it was Steve McQueen who said he used to wear this one a lot. Beautiful, masterful creation, Edmund Rudnitska, 1966, citrus, floral accords, bit of woods in the base, just enough kind of green salad-esque notes. I think the uh, perfume writer Luca Turin said something about a Vietnamese salad accord that he detected in this. I don't pick up on that, but I kind of get what he means. It's beautiful. Old Sauvage, I've got a vintage one. If you can get an old one, great. If not, just buy the new version and spray more. Guys, that's all I've got to say on this particular video. Thank you ever so much for watching. Remember, whatever you're doing in life, let's project. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.